Uh, the end of the 50s, Carl, uh, Carl Eric Angstrom went over to the States to his, uh, his annual visit to try and sell loads of accordions, which is where Hagstrom made all their money since about 1929 or whatever it was. Um, he came back and he said, um, accordions are dead, got to make guitars. Um, the people at the factory said, um, OK, um, what shall we use? And he said, just use what you've got. And what they got was loads of materials for making accordions. Um, switches, glitter, plastic, lucite, um, sort of a, an acrylic material uh, made by DuPont in the Second World War. And that uh, lucite material is used as the, uh, the fretboard, under which you've got um, sort of a mother of pearl type material. Um, set into the fretboard, stainless steel frets, and since 1958, this has had quite a bit of use, but it still looks phenomenal. Um, frets don't wear down because they're stainless steel. Um, and my son is uh, a little bit uh, geeky about his guitars and he thought, I'm gonna hate this. And he's actually turned around and said, it's, it's actually not bad. But uh, anyway, there we go. It's from the very first batch of guitars that Hagstrom made um, from 58 to 59. Don't know exactly where. Um, bit sort of prototypish. The, um, the 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 tailpiece with the patented um, trem system. It's uh, uh, those who know a little bit will know that there were two versions. One with little pins in there. This one's got little pins, and also the socket where the arm goes has got like a push in and twist to lock. Because after that they had a um, a, a little screw thing that, that that tightened them up. On that, it just goes in and twists like a bayonet fitting. Um, anyway, you want to hear it? Um, so while we hear it, uh, Chris will tell you a little bit about it. It all seems to work straight out of the box where it's, or in, well, the case it's been for a while. Um, we did clean the jack socket, a little bit of air clean, and immediately it was absolutely fine. Probably needs a bit more of that in a few places, but that's about it. In fact, it was virtually in tune when we took it out the case. or 58 or something like that 57 I think so what have you what have you observed about it um, as far as I can work out solo button is full on volume a complement you've got a volume control here low and high pickups low pickup high pickup whatever that does. That should supposed to be an off and on. An off and on yeah. uh, what about, are, uh, tones. 
tones or volumes? So that's, kind that's of both volume, effects. Yeah. No, no, because yeah, that okay. one. It's tone. But right. It... Certainly needs a bit of air. A bit of air clean in there. <laughs> right, what about the bridge? Because given that this was, you know, almost at the prototype stage, um, that doesn't look like a Hagstrom bridge. So what do you think of that? It's Gibson esque. Um, it's got bone saddles or maybe some kind of plastic, but they're definitely not metal. Um, you're the expert, I don't know. <laughs> no, I, I mean, uh, when it, it comes it, to it, things like that, I'm not so sure. <laughs> surprisingly well I mean trunk it's like yeah. a, it's square essentially yeah, it's yeah. it's really it reminds me of the um early uh gibson 335 neck right it's with that custom shot one right, right. it's that kind of big chunky thing All the tuners look okay, and yeah. um, I, I have to say, I'm actually stunned how much it's sparkling. You know, we haven't got spotlights on or anything, so <laughs> yeah, we've got just the room lights on, and uh, you move around, and it really does sparkle. So that's quite unusual for these glitter guitars. So I don't know whether it was a better quality glitter they used in the very first ones or what. You know. Uh, it's effectively kind of sticky back plastic anyway, so maybe this one isn't. So. Um, just the materials they used for accordions in the early days. And in fact, if you look at the edge, um, nothing to do with U2, but if you look at the edge of it, it's got this ribbing all around it. Again, something indicative of the, uh, the accordion manufacture. Um, and unusual uh, against most of them, it had the black back of it, again, mostly from um, accordion type of production and so forth whereas a lot of them got the, uh, the the white perloid on them so it's a very unusual example but it seems to be in phenomenal condition for you know 58 59 so there it is what you gonna do to play us out that <laughs> <laughs> noting that the strings are probably from 1958 as well. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> mm, So should we keep it? <laughs> <laughs> too many, it's, too it's, many, it's, too many. It's, it's no H2 and O2. <laughs> no, to be fair.
But it's a lot better than you thought it was going to be, that's for sure. It's a hell of a lot better than the Goyas and things, isn't it? Remember that Goya? Iconic, but nothing like as good as this. Oh, and it's all solid as well. That's the other thing. It weighs a ton. It's about nine pounds or something. So it resonates. Yeah, it really well. resonates. Yeah. Let's have a look at the back of the headstock where the uh, the information is upside down, but never mind. Let's have a look. Where is it? Can we read it? Can we read it? Possibly, yes. There you go. Uh, just to get a view of the back, there's no gouges or anything in it. In fact, everything is actually perfectly intact, which is crazy for an instrument that comes from the very first production batch that they made. Whew! Might keep it, you know. <laughs> 